you are tuned in to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out, and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Greetings, and welcome to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. I'm your host, Lance White. Today, my guest is John Waldrop. With a gift for sensing and communicating emotions, John has realized alignment in his practice as a counseling astrologer. The greatest expression of his gifts is to serve the earth by helping his clients remember why they came into the earth journey at this time. John's metapoetic astrology gives voice to the struggle and glory of our evolution into frequency artists creating the future of human life in the earth plane. You can read John's articles and find out more or schedule a reading at www.senseofvisionastrology.com. So now let's welcome John to the show. Hi, John. How are you? I'm great, Lance. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you, and uh, also thank you for doing a reading for me, an astrological reading this week, which absolutely blew me away. So I am personal witness that uh, your work is utterly amazing. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's, it's, uh, it's quite a blessing to get to meet with you in such a deep space through the lens of the chart. Yes, yes, absolutely, and uh, interesting too that you you intuited uh, so much about me, you know, that was uh, at, happening at this moment. So it, it was perfect timing uh, for me. <clears throat> yeah, you've been uh, you've been called to uh, get some things done these days, haven't you? Oh yes, <laughs> it's almost like. Uh, I've been, uh, the switch, the DNA switch got turned on, and I've been called into public service or something. Yeah, that would so. be a good, that's a good, uh, you know, this Neptune on the North Node uh, that happens a while back, that's, that's called, the, the DNA switched on. That would be a good way to say that, is that uh, the DNA has been switched on indeed. Like you've been, you're a gong that's been, Gong, you're you're vibrating now in your higher frequency, hey? Yeah, we could call this the Gong Show then. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now, love um, it. maybe we can find out while we're on this uh, this uh, journey here uh, what is happening on the planet in general uh, in terms of the astrology that we're all experiencing. Well, the good news is, I guess it's good news in a, in a sort of release or relief sense, is I think over the next couple of months we're going we're gonna to get a little breather from the intense pressures, uh, for instance, that we were under last summer. Um, going deeper into 2012, it's going to be, uh, we're, we're definitely going to ramp up into um, another layer of Basically, pressure by the guides, the, the outer planets in particular, that are guiding us deeper into our potentials as Earth dwellers to love our lives, which is, in my opinion, why we as souls come in, is to learn to love life in the Earth. And um, the, the outer planets essentially act as shamans and they can act in sort of a, a, a harmonious way or they can act in a, shall we say, cacophonous way. And going into next summer in particular, we're going to have a great deal of pressure to uh, come into alignment with who we really are and to change the way that we have been living on this planet at this time you know, in the last hundred years in particular, but, but going back for quite some time. Well, it's about time, as, <clears throat> as we all know. Uh, I think the changes are, are long overdue. Um, do you do any work on the USA chart as well, or is that just something that um, some people specialize in? 
You know, I haven't uh, spent a lot of time with it. I know people do work with that. Um, in general, though, Pluto is going to be opposing the sun of the United States, and that is essentially, um, it's, you know, not to be, I don't, without putting a gloss on it, let's just say that the, uh, the experience will seem as though our luck has run out in terms of uh, the forward momentum of the United States. Pluto in Capricorn, where it is right now, is, you know, I think of Capricorn as the sign of the way, the path, the, the Tao, you might almost say. It's the sign that most loves to know where it's going and how it's going to get there step by step and so forth. And you could even think of it as the way we have been living Pluto, on the other hand, is this almost like blowtorch energy coming through and sweeping off the fragments of egoic nature, sweeping off the fragments of um, everything that's not essentially true to the soul of whatever it's acting on. And so the United States sun is in uh, mm, 10, 12 degrees of cancer, and Pluto is going to line up opposite that at the end of 2012. And that will be an experience where the best efforts and intentions of this oh, economic and political body known as the U.S. of A. will most likely run into some very intense oppositional factors, some very intense uh, uh, countering, thwarting of whatever the general aims are towards an election year. It's going to be very interesting and uh, I sense that just with that alone, without bringing in Uranus in Aries or Neptune in Pisces, you have the makings of a great deal of change in our country. But with the other two outer planets, you know, Aries is really this sign that's so misunderstood because the reason Aries people seem to always be moving forward to the next thing, you know, what's right in front of me, uh, is because they don't want to be slowed down to be asked to take a look at what's really inside of them. And so Uranus is this planet coming along, and it's, it's like showing us what's inside. Uranus is, could be called the planet that teaches us who we really are. Uh-huh. And... Uranus is in Aries right now teaching us that who we really are is this multitude, this vast multitude of past and future lives that is present in each of us at all times. You know, seers and intuitives are tuning in more and more strongly to those energies, and they're just being brought to the surface, brought to the surface. So you take that energy and you put it in a square aspect to Pluto and Capricorn, which is what's going to happen next summer, Um, you've got all of this tension to become who we essentially are, to come truly into relationship with all of our multiple layers of selfhood and then also Mm -hmm. change the way we've been living. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is going to be acting very strongly on the chart of the United States. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it's um, it's big stuff. Yes, it is. Well, you know, these are times with, that we know uh, there will be big changes because, <clears throat> or that there should be big changes because so many cycles are coming to a close. The most uh, prominent ones ending sometime in the window of 2012. Um, have you also done much research or investigated uh, into the astrology at the time of December 2012? Yeah, I have been looking at that. I have been looking at that. And, you know, there's, um, there's some really remarkable things happening at that time. But uh, I think, you know, in my opinion, that's sort of going to be the midpoint of a shifting energy that could happen, could begin well before that, and could be wrapping up well after that. In other words, it's, it's, I don't expect... Personally, I don't expect there to be a sudden change from one day to the next. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, going into the last, well, I looked at the, the chart for 12-21-2012, which is, of course, the, the day that many people are saying is um, 
so significant in this shift. And interestingly enough, the way that I work with the moon and the moon phases uh, on that day, a significant energy for the chart of that day, the way that I read the charts, says that we are going to be a crowd of people sensing a sh- sudden shift in group karma. That's actually the, mm-hmm. the uh, Pleiadian symbol for the moon's position uh, on that day, a crowd of people mm. sensing a sudden shift in group karma. And mm. that's a really interesting thing that out of all of the degrees in the whole zodiac, 360 degrees in the whole zodiac, that would be the one guiding us through that particular day. Um, yeah, there, you know, there are many uh, coincidences or synergies or alignments in so many of these timing methods that we're looking at. And my personal feeling is that what we're being called to do, Lance, is to change within ourselves into more loving, community-centered human beings with a living relationship with the earth, which is some part of what's been missing for the last couple hundred years in particular, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. As we shifted away from agrarian lifestyles and shifted into urban electrical lifestyles, we uh, sort of lost our sense of rhythm and community with the earth. And uh, in my opinion, that's, that's a big piece of what needs to be restored and which I believe the outer planets in particular are acting on us to remember that we are part of a community called humanity and that humanity mm-hmm. itself is in community with the Earth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Well, you know, <clears throat> according to uh, Carl Kellerman, on October 28th of this year, 2011, we graduated, so to speak, from the uh, top or the ninth wave of the pyramid. And so technically speaking, according to that uh, time frame, we've already hit uh, the end of the mind calendar. <clears throat> but um, here we are <laughs> in 2011, continuing yeah. on, and 2012 is yet another date uh, in the uh, Gregorian calendar. Yeah, and so on and so forth. So, uh, but technically, that that would indicate that we were we had moved into a uh, co-creation or a collective consciousness of our interconnected uh, awareness. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I just I was on the phone with Mahalo yesterday, and she, in her writing, had identified November ninth as the date that she thought that it happened. My writings I have indicated that I thought it was November 9th as well. That was simply uh-huh. due to um, the shifting of Uranus, or excuse me, of, of Neptune into direct motion from uh, its most recent retrograde period, and it's going to leave the sign of Aquarius. You know, it's been in the sign of Aquarius since about 1997. And it's going to go off into the Piscean realm for the next 15 years. Um, very interesting energy, that Neptune and Pisces. It's, uh, it's like that, to me, is the shift into the what you would call unitive consciousness. Because uh-huh. you know, Pisces is really the, the sign of that, what makes us the most human. It's this, it's this common experience of life at a very earthy, grounded level, which some people might find uh, um, a strange description of Pisces. But Pisces is, to me, the electromagnetic ocean where our dreams live, where our, um, you know, where we have contact with the elementals and the fairies and, and all of those things. It's, it's, it's an energy that we don't typically actually contact. And as Neptune goes into Pisces, it's going to bring that aspect of life more and more into focus. And, you know, historically, uh, the last time Neptune was in Pisces was in the period leading up to the start of the Civil War, um, Mm. which 
it makes sense at a certain level because you you think of Pisces in that way, and then you think about the experience of observing other human beings in bondage and slavery, essentially. And you know, it's a situation that existed in the United States for a hundred and some years before we actually decided to do something about it. And so mm-hmm. one of the things I'm really curious about is what are the shifts into, you know, shifting from being bothered by something, for instance, our financial mm-hmm. system, and taking action, which is what's happening now with the Occupy movement around the world. Yeah, so there's, yeah. There's, 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 there's just a lot of pressure of that kind coming down in the charts. I mean, uh, the last time Pluto was in Capricorn, which is where it is well into the 2020s, um, was presaging and leading up to the start of the American Revolution. So we have that energy going on. And then Neptune in Pisces, which it was last in, in the period leading up to the American Civil War. And then Uranus is in Aries, and the last time Uranus was in Aries was in the period leading up to the Great Depression. So mm. there's a lot of shifting that's going on, and it's the kind of thing that's going to bring us front and center into taking action to make changes as we see them needed, you know. Indeed, indeed. Well, uh, some people have been... Uh, uh, talking about uh, this period of time as a part of a recurring depression, that is, it, it, that it will rival the Great Depression. And I've tracked this. Uh, uh, there's a really good column written by George Urry called uh, uh, Peoplenomics and also Urban Survival, <clears throat> and he's been tracking this for quite some time. It's a pithy column. And... Um, I, I kind of expected the uh, the collapse of the economic system to happen in about 2009, and it didn't happen. So here we are, and uh, if what you're saying is uh, is a portent of things to come, then it looks like we might be in for some excitement uh, some, and from any time now into next summer. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, and, and then... You know, going on into 2013, indeed, the the pressure, this this uh, Pluto opposition to the Sun of the United States, that just uh-huh. ramps up going into 2013, and um, you know, that is Pluto. Another another way to think of Pluto is it's the the energy that gives rise to the Phoenix. You know, to become the Phoenix, of course, you have to rise from the ashes, which implies the ashes phase, and so, um, you know, I, I'm with you, it's, it's, uh, it's likely, it seems, I mean, for all sorts of reasons, I have a fair amount of economic experience in my past, and I can tell you that uh, um, there isn't any reason for the market to go up, I mean, there's just not. <laughs> so, oh, right, right, yeah, I mean, so, yeah. And I don't think there are too many people listening to the show that aren't aware of the artificial uh, pump you up quality that the powers that uh, that run things have been doing, and the the takeover and the purchase of major countries that's going on right now. Yeah, absolutely, Lance. And you know, there's this perspective that we could have on it, which I I really invite people to consider which is that it's all leading us somewhere. It's all part of the shift. Like, human beings do not choose to evolve from a place of comfort. They don't choose to evolve from a place of stasis. We choose to evolve when we need to evolve. And so, basically, the circumstances pressurizing pressurizing us into uh, taking action have got to be in place. And... I mean, you could look back at 1963 through 68 as a period of time when um, why didn't it happen then, you know? Uh, Uranus and Pluto were in a conjunction aspect in late 66 through 1968. This square that we're coming into now is like the evolution of that aspect into a much more action-oriented phase of it. 
um, the ideas mm-hmm. that were brought into being at that time, the the movements that were started at, at that time, you know, as the tension lightened up into the 70s and early 80s, um, all these people who had had these wild idealist uh, tendencies, wanting to live in community and in harmony with the earth and without war and all of those wonderful 60s ideas, I mean, they all kind of became yuppies. And uh, we lost right. track of that movement. But now that this square is coming into play, um, that's a significant um, action taking place to say, no, those ideas were valid, and now we're going to act on them. This is what's going to happen next. <clears throat> so uh, some people look upon the period of the 60s that you were just talking about and the period that we are entering into or in now as kind of like bookends, uh, which started then, and then this is the, the kind of the culmination of that energy. Is that a good way to describe it, like a bookend, so to speak? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I want to bring up the energy of Alpha Omega, or Chiron, as a lot of people call it, because that, interestingly enough, has a 50-year-long orbit, so... The last time it was in Pisces was 50 years ago. Um, to, you know, at that time, 50 years ago, uh, the civil rights movement started. Uh, um, mm-hmm. A lot of these feelings of being in unity and want, desiring harmony and so forth, I think, could be attributed to Alpha Omega in Pisces at that time. Alpha Omega is essentially, um, I call it the planet that helps us to remember what we have always been looking forward to. If you can imagine Uh. a human being, um, you know, somewhere deep inside you, you have this sense of a better world. You have a sense of what's possible for humanity. You have an innate knowing that it doesn't need to be so shallow and superficial and artificial, you know? We yes. know deep down inside that we can do better than this, basically, and Alpha Omega is that planet which helps, helps us remember that. So all of us who were born in the 60s are experiencing our Alpha Omega returns. It's coming back around through Pisces, and it is, uh, it's triggering that remembrance in so many people from that generation. And at the same time, just being in Pisces, it's It's helping us to be united at that deep subconscious level that I was talking about earlier. And the thing that's significant about this passage is that it will be joined by Neptune and Pisces. And Neptune and Pisces, again, is the energy that, in my opinion, started the Civil War. It's it's where we find ourselves so connected to each other at the basic level that we can't stand to see injustice done. I mean... Neptune and Pisces will not let the Palestinian situation stand as it is. It will not let um, the economic inequality existing in our world stand. It's it's going to bring forth a unified field of human experience through basically pulling away at all of the structures that are separating us from that. It's a very exciting time in my opinion. I mean, if you think about it from a soul level, uh, yeah. this is heavy duty. We, we, like, we have the good tickets. Like, my soul and your soul, <laughs> they wanted to be here for this radical change. I think that that's really what souls love above all else, is radical change, transformation, yeah, yeah. and growth. Uh, and we are souls. I mean, I'm here to tell you that back in the the time between lives, we were like, hey, give me some more of that Pluto and Capricorn. Because, yeah, I want some more of that Uranus and Aries. Let's get some of that. Let's get some of these big changes lined up. And uh, we'll come in and we'll, we'll struggle back and forth, and there will be conflict which tries to derail our true sense of what is possible. And in the, mean, in the midst of it all, we will suddenly come forth with a story that is ours about how we save the earth from the brink. And that's mm. what we really want, is we want to own this story of surviving the end of oil, of surviving the end of America, perhaps, 
of, you know, so many of these giant institutions that are going to fall apart here, um, we want to do it with a climax and a crescendo and a crisis and to make it exciting. And that's, that's exactly what's happening. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, so that's, uh, that's some uh, mundane astrology for you. Whoa, whoa. Um, you also wrote an interesting article on <clears throat> the, the witch Mahala, uh, uh, so that people know, most people do know Mahala Gale. Yeah. She's a friend of both of ours, who's a, a, another Virgo, uh, writes a wonderful uh, monthly planet alert and does a lot of terrific work. But uh, she posted your article on YU55 and its lessons to us. Yeah. Um, could, would you share a little bit of your thoughts about that? Well, absolutely, Lance. Um, you know, I see these, all of the astrological bodies, essentially as teachers. And, you know, we can get hooked up into the notion that um, challenges are bad. For instance, when our fear is brought to the surface or when our anger is brought to the surface or any of these things, that it's a bad thing. But really taking it from the perspective of, okay, my soul chose to come into a body. The body gives my soul the experience of emotions. I want to I I get these emotions. I want to feel them and get them. And, you know, when you take that perspective and just start looking at any of these current events, including the visitation of YU-55, it's, you know, what did it trigger? It triggered emotions, and it triggered emotions that helped us see how, um, for instance, the it's an opportunity to break free of the controlling fears, which essentially the, the powers that be, the entrenched elite, would like us to be afraid. I mean, mm-hmm. the most revolutionary and outrageous thing you can do right now is be happy and not be afraid and look forward mm-hmm. to this change and be willing to accept whatever's coming next. So every thing that's going on right now is helping us take the step into a forward, future-oriented way of living instead of being hooked into pointing fingers back over our shoulders or at some other person to actually take responsibility for the change within ourselves. I mean, that's, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of pieces to that, Lance. I mean, basically, um, that's one of the problems I have with putting definite dates on a lot of these transformational, you know, energies that we're tuned into. It's because people can have a tendency to say, well, I'll just wait until... December 21st of 2012, and I won't need to do the change within myself. Um, oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? It doesn't work and, like that. Uh, <laughs> and so, basically, that's, that's uh, you know, January 1st of 2013 will come around, and March 1st of 2013, and then June of 2013 will come around, and we'll be going, wow, this is... I still have work to do. I still have to, you know, make change. And that's going to be a really interesting thing. So, in other words, all of these things, YU55 included, have been helping us become more and more present within just really who we are at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and and I can't uh, reiterate enough what you said about uh, the the ultimate uh, re- act of rebellion is to be happy, yeah, and to not live in fear. That really is uh, a vibration that is higher, and uh, the negative elements that are attempting to uh, lower the whole planet to a lower common denominator can't survive. If the people, if we all are living in in uh, our own empowerment and taking responsibility for ourselves and are happy and not afraid, because this whole uh, paradigm that has uh, been going on too long, which some people refer to as the patriarchy, yeah. uh, depends upon fear, yeah. and it's not a legitimate fear; it's false fear, 
fed by false flag events and numerous other things that uh, are designed to scare the bejesus out of us. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, um, if we're not afraid, and and like you said, we are here, we chose to be here, we jumped in uh, at the soul level um, to be here and, and uh, experience this and contribute to it, uh, then mm-hmm. it can become quite a fun game if we are owning our own power and stepping up to the plates that we have chosen already, kind of like Neo in The Matrix, you know, talking yes. to the Oracle, where yes. he says, you know, well, you already know what you chose. Now you're coming to me to figure out why you chose it. I think that's what she said, but yeah. anyway, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's just it, yeah. And, you know, there's there's so much juicy stuff just in this little last couple of moments in this conversation, I mean, just to bring up the word vibration, um, really, what we're learning to do is to be creative with our vibration. You know, that's this frequency artist phrase that I've come up with recently and I'm using a lot. It's, you know, what is Abraham teaching us? It's that we get what we ask for, and the way we feel is what we're asking for. So if we're feeling afraid, if we're feeling doomed, if we're feeling like this is not fair, we're just going to get more of it. <laughs> right. If, right. If, if you want to shift into a positive future, you shift the way you feel. What you're emanating into the universe is what you get. Yes. And, see, we used to know this. As yeah. a species, we, we were gifted with this awareness, especially back in the Atlantean times. And it was in our seeking to have more, seeking to be um, even more, you know, basically to, to live without dying, essentially, is what we have. That's always been our sin, is to negate the beauty of death, um, if you want to use the word sin. Um, big word there. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know... As we go forward into this time, it's like, I want to vibrate a frequency which is allowing of all cycles, which is allowing of the cycles within me and allowing of the cycles within you that recognizes that who you really are at any given moment could be a thousand different particles of yourself that have existed in time forever and will always exist, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh... That's, that's what this is really about to me. It's like coming into contact with enough conflict. That's what the outer planets are doing, is they're just raising it up and raising it up so that we can shift it into creative, unified consciousness. Wow. wow. Very eloquently stated. <laughs> I'm glad and, you um, so. it, it reminds me of the movie and the uh, research that was done uh, that is called a hundredth monkey theory. Yes, <clears throat> and I, I I know that people are familiar with that, so we, I don't have to explain it. But you know, that's basically it that we are creating or having a co-creation of this tension, this building tension, and at some point uh, there has to be resolution. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the hundredth so, monkey effect is really. Um, it's dear to my heart, of course. It's, it's like, what a great motivation and impetus just to do the work. What if, what if you, any one of us, we don't know who it's going to be, get right. to the 100th monkey and it shifts? What yeah. if you're the one who, you know, it's like the little pebble that hits the slope and the avalanche starts. Um, any one of us could be that person. Yes. Yes, and and I've thought that all my life I've had that feeling, and I even had a visual on it where uh, at some point everything will cycle around, you know, in eternity and in an infinite uh, time space. Everything eventually cycles around, and there may be a moment when each one of us is the fulcrum where we where a thought, a mere thought, which is, weighs nothing. Uh, maybe a nanoparticle of energy is the very thing that tilts the scales and the whole thing, 
the hologram shifts into yeah. another paradigm, which is, you know, a, a, a wonderful new creation uh, for all that is. So I do see that as a possibility. Yeah, you know, I I I really appreciate the way you put that. It's um, it it's coming to that. You know, in the midst of these wildly collective forces, these massive forces for change at such a broad scale, each of us has this power. And that's so unique to the human experience. I don't, we, we don't really know if dolphins, for instance, are creating as they go. Mm. But we know that humans are creating as we go. We are creating our worlds. I mean, quantum physics says that. Uh, the teachings of Abraham say that. All of the great masters have always said that. As you believe, so you shall see. And this is, you know, that word belief is one that has been belittled and ridiculed and stricken down by the rational, mental, fixated 19th and 20th centuries. Belief is, um, by Wikipedia definition at least, a psychological state wherein someone holds something to be true. Knowledge is a justified true belief. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like knowledge is something that you believe to be true based on all the evidence, whereas belief is something that you just think is true just because you feel it. Uh, that feeling part of it is the key, you know? And what what I'm getting to here is this frequency artist thing that we're learning to do, this ability to create a unified, harmonious, beautiful Earth existence that each of us carries within us by design. Um, it has to do with learning to feel truth again. It's, it's like uh, people are so afraid of following their intuition and their feelings because we don't want to be wrong. We don't want to be proven wrong. There's some cynical way of looking at people who follow their feelings. I'm, you know, like caution, driver, following guidance. You know, <laughs> I'm out there in front of you following my guides, and who knows where I might go. Oh, my God. But uh, right. this, is, this is what we're doing, and we're, it's like the whole structure has to be broken Everything that we have counted on has to be broken. For instance, Einstein's theory of relativity and the speed limit of light being broken recently, it's like evidence that everything we ever thought about limits on anything is designed to be broken at this time. Limits on mm, yeah. the power of the people, limits on justice and truth and joy and beauty. These things are the most powerful things in the world, and they're, they're being brought to the fore by these tensions. Everything that we experience is to show us how great our neighbors actually are, how incredibly generous we as individuals actually are, you know? Mm. <laughs> it makes me wonder if there are, uh, there are some kind of divine archetypes that we are beginning to uh, true up our reality to. In other words, uh, we've experimented and experienced everything that can be pretty much. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah. The good, bad, and the ugly. And um, maybe this is a time when the pristine uh, beauty and quality of these divine archetypes is beginning to radiate and shine through uh, the energy that has been so dense for so long, and we're undensifying, <laughs> perhaps. That's, that's really it, Lance. That's a great way to put it. You know, I mean, Pluto and Capricorn is undensifying everything about how we thought we should live. I mean, Capricorn has a lot to say about the word should, should the should that, should be like this, and um, Pluto is taking away all of those things to let us be 
what we truly are, which is beings of energy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I look forward to a time when there's no more deception and lies, manipulation, and uh, false uh, teachings going on. There's so many secrets that have been kept. Uh, in fact, there are so many secrets, I can make this statement fairly easily, uh, being kept from us, which we actually have financed ourselves, yeah. that there's an entire civilization that is uh, a breakaway civilization, which uh, is referred to as Civilization One. We, the bulk of humanity, is still kind of uh, toddling around uh, like babies in uh, dirty diapers in Civilization Zero. And there's a whole breakaway civilization that has advanced technology and, uh, you know, the ability to do a lot of things that we we hear about in the uh, Internet shows. And I do believe that that's true. <clears throat> so that has to be uh, trued up and resolved in some way, and the truth has to come out. Does, is there yeah. anything that indicates that the truth will start to be uh, revealed revealed through all this deception that's been going on for so long? Yeah, I mean, through the process of the polarity just getting more and more stark, um, you know, yeah. the idea that you have to know darkness to know what light actually is, I mean, that's um, that's another way to look at all of this that's happening right now. It's like we're... Humanity itself is being entered into a bit of a dark night of the soul. Um, you would think that the vapid, uh, spacey times that we've had in the recent, like, last 20 years might be the dark night of the soul. That would be, like, the entrance into it, I would say. And, and we're, what we're going through now is where we start to hit ground and start to become real and honest, and yeah, the truth will out, no doubt. Yes, and, and it seems that a large part of this has to do with our being shaken from the tree of materialism, yeah. that uh, we've had our day in acquiring things and stuff and uh, titles and prestige and fame and fortune. Uh, and that just doesn't seem to, uh, it's not satisfying for anybody that's in it. And when I look at some of these people that are still playing that game, I just, I just get the sense that they're going through the motions. That, uh, the, even the, even the people who have all this stuff are just completely fed up with it and just ready to walk away from life entirely. And, and they have what hundreds of thousands and millions of people seem to be clamoring for, the, you know, this and that and the other thing. So uh, it truly does seem to be a shift from uh, outer-oriented uh, pursuits to inner-oriented and to the spirit and the metaphysics and the invisible realms. Yeah, what feels good, you know, what actually feels yeah. good is not... Um, in the long run, over the term of a lifetime, it turns out not to have anything to do with what sunglasses you have and what car you drive. It has everything to do with um, how well you have loved your neighbors and your your lovers and, you know, what you have given to people who are in need, your generosity, your yeah. charity. I mean, very old-fashioned notions. Um, it's It's interesting, isn't it, that this is... In, in some way, the cutting edge of the evolution forward is is back towards certain notions of neighborliness and and all of that. I mean, you know, what community. would Jesus do? Yeah, Jesus would use his turn signal, you know? Jesus would put his shopping cart away. There's just, there's just little things like that that we can do, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah and, and to be the one that uh, smiles first so that the universe... And others who, uh, you know, maybe aren't on the same page, aren't having a good day. Just that little smile can change the whole uh, balance or equation for, you know, sending ripples of uh, human kindness out into the world and some compassion, which seems to be sorely needed since it's been sucked out of humanity uh, so rapidly by corporations and politicians and and greedy bankers. (laughs) Yeah, you know, that's the frequency artist in action right there. When you're the one yeah. who is able to create the beautiful smile that makes the other person smile, and then, yeah, it's, it's 
it ripples so far and oh man it's just it's just such a subtle shift it's such a subtle shift and in so many ways i think that each of us what what i'm what what i see the purpose of the hundredth monkey effect at this time is that enough of us realize that soon enough that there is no bloody revolution there is no dramatic um war as part of this shift there is no doubt that our resource use is going to change and yes typically the people with the most resources fight the hardest to keep them and so forth and what i really 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 hope is going to happen out of all of this is that we are able to pray into a space where the people who um would typically fight for you know dominance of the most um, will will share in order to prevent bloodshed and warfare and, and mass die-offs and all of the things that could possibly come out of this shift. I mean, we have the ability to create the world. As more and more of us shine our heart energy out, as more and more of us take on the role of the frequency artist, we have the ability to create the most beautiful world ever known in the history of mankind, that's what our souls are here to do. You know, it's not going to be the little civilization that couldn't. It's going to be the little <laughs> civilization that did, you know. Yeah, I love that. That's very beautiful. Yeah, we can do this. And we can, and in the same way, with our heart energy, can heal the water. We can heal the air. You know, this is the power of human beings is that great. And... We just, for some reason, want to know what it's like to almost blow it. And uh, yes, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, yeah, I, 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 I can hear you on that one. It does seem that we're we're push we're being we're allowing ourselves or creating the experience of being pushed beyond the wall. I mean, it's almost as if we're being ground into the the wall itself before we rise up and, uh, you know, wake up and snap out of it uh, as a collective. Yeah. It has something to do with desiring to own the shift, you know, to, to yeah. make it feel like, you know, when we tell the story three generations down the line, uh, we, we, you know, we, t we look back to the early 21st century when it almost ended and all of the, and, and it's like those will be the fireside stories that, uh, Keep the heads in line then, you know. Yeah, don't live yeah, outside of your with. heart. Don't make sure you remember to live in your heart, son, because look what almost happened back in the day. There you, know. you go. <laughs> uh, do you come into contact with uh, some of your clients that you do astrology work for that you feel might be from uh, the future uh, with some kind of role here to play in the present and our present that uh, we're experiencing? Yes, absolutely. I, I definitely do. Um, there's some very, very key indicators, and and then there's always the experience of finding somebody who is like leaping ahead of where what I see in their chart would uh, indicate that they are. In other words, there that would be something like the walk-in. Uh, I know I have oh, yeah. to people like that, where it's like, wow, you're. You've you've already done this. Okay, let's move on. Oh, you've already done that. Okay, <laughs> you know that does happen. Well, but um, yeah, go ahead. Well, that's that's all. I just uh, was wondering about the walk-ins too. You just mentioned that, and uh, I have had friends who have either been or knew walk-ins that they were married to. So it is it, it's a real phenomenon. Oh, absolutely. Um. You know, I know that you have psychic gifts, and, uh, you know, I can just say that I have had experiences in my own psychic domain that uh, proved to me without a doubt that other forces are at work here and other forces are yes. asking yes, to Yes, I would help. have to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I I want to bring up, well, I don't know how much time we have, but basically 
December 24th of this year is a date that I would like to put forth as being a really uh, a, a vibrational opening with a lot of potential to for shift to really go forward for a long time. And that's because it's a new moon, and new moons are always vibrational openings. Every month you get into this rhythm of the moon, you find that you can you can really get a lot of work done with the intentions that you cast on the new moon. But yeah. uh, this one in particular, because it's the first moon of the 2012 cycle, it is Christmas Eve, so it's going to be a time when people are together oh, yeah. and feeling community anyway. And then, significantly to this one, the very next day, Jupiter goes direct, and we have no retrograde planets for the first 30 days of the 2012 moon cycle. So it's like whatever energies we set forth on that day will will go forward. They'll go out into the universe and have a great deal of uh, impact. And in particular, I'm cognizant of the, the symbol for the degree that this new moon happens in. You know, I work with John Sandbach's Pleiadian symbols and other symbol sets. Uh, there's sort of like a tarot card for each of the 360 degrees of the zodiac. And this uh-huh. particular new moon is happening in the third degree of Capricorn. And the symbol for that, the Pleiadian symbol for that, is a man drinks in the essence of a forgotten dream. A man drinks in the essence of a forgotten dream. And what I get from that is this is an opportunity to remember what we have always known, to remember what we're looking forward to as the ultimate power of humanity to create a beautiful and positive, harmonious world. Um, I think it's the dream that we're going to be remembering is our ability to create the world that we live in and to do so positively and with joyous heart energy. And so I'm putting out to everybody who will listen, and of course with your radio show I have the opportunity to tell a lot of people at once, December 24th, 2012, at approximately 10 in the morning Pacific time, is a time when whatever you pray for or vibrate out into the universe will go far towards changing the world in that positive direction that we want to. Wonderful. Well, that is. I just wrote all that down on my notes because yeah. I do take notes when my guests are sharing their experience. Yeah. Uh, and that is a wonderful uh, thing to share with us all. Thank you. <clears throat> um, do you have any more? Uh, <laughs> do you, we have a few more minutes left. Do you have any more um, of these uh, wonderful uh, uh, experiences to share with us before we uh, end the show? Well, I just want to say that um, part of, in my opinion, getting into that co-creational heart space has to do with coming into an allowance for your own experience. It's like when we have experiences in our lives that we you know society or our parents or our employers or whatever find to be outside of the box and unacceptable, you know, Typically, when we're going through big changes, like so many people are right now, um, we can try to negate our feelings. We can try to shut them down. And that just prevents them from flowing through and getting out, you know, being Mm -hmm. like we need to get finished with certain things. Some energies, some karmic cycles and things, it's actually like we need to wear them out, you know, to, to reach a point where we're consciously running the loop that we know is no longer serving us, just one last time, just like, no, I'm, I'll smoke one more pack of cigarettes and then I'm going to quit, you know. But <laughs> having, more, <laughs> having more to do with uh, ingrained behavioral loops and so forth. And basically I just feel like the power of astrology is to help understand the cycles of life, to, to see these rhythms of emotion within your own experience. I mean... Um, I think that we found some really interesting and beautiful rhythms in your own 
reading, you know. Oh, yes, there's no doubt about that. Which uh, that was a- absolutely amazing, <clears throat> what you brought forth and revealed to me uh, in, in our reading together. Well, thank you. I, it's, it's just such an honor. And, you know, that ability to look into the rhythm, you know, what, what is the turning point opportunity here in a person's given life? So most of it just has to do with um, when you realize that your birth chart and other charts related to your time of birth have the power to reveal so much about where you are. It's like it, it, it helps create that sense of perspective that our lives do have meaning. If something about the position of the planets at the time of my birth accurately depicts how I am in this lifetime, doesn't that say so much about the microcosm reflecting the macrocosm and so much about a soul experience in this life and so much about the teachers, the great natural archetypes and teachers that are out there? Um, it, just, it just gives me a great deal of satisfaction to share this journey with people and see their eyes open up to the fact that they really are here for a reason. You know, that this whole transitional period is purposeful. It's, there's more to it than just, uh, it's not an accident, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, as a friend of mine used to say, there are no accidents. <laughs> there, there, I, I believe that, too. I mean, uh, it, except that we learn something faster than uh, might right. otherwise be expected. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, it is yeah. kind of a paradox, so. Uh, it it seems a, a paradox seems to help with uh, transcending the duality that we are uh, transforming at the moment. Exactly. Yeah. This is well, this John. Is about... uh, we're uh, just about out of time, and okay. I'd like for you to have a minute or two to be able to share your website with us and where people can reach you and find your writings and uh, contact you about. Uh, also having a, a wonderful reading, just as I did. Okay, Lance. Um, it's www.senseofvisionastrology.com, S-E-N-S-E-O-F-V-I-S-I-O-N, astrology.com. And on my website, you can find my recent writings, recent talks that I've given, and uh, I want to point out, since we're coming into the holiday season, I do have gift certificates on there. If you're interested in getting a reading for a friend or loved one, um, that's a really nice thing to do. And um, Oh, yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, uh, what so a, you can what contact me through there. Uh, yeah, what a wonderful gift to give instead of a piece of junk that <laughs> will <laughs> break down in a few weeks after the holidays. Yes, this is a lasting gift. I, that's a great one. Good idea. Cool. Cool, thank you. Well, John, uh, thank you for being on uh, today, and uh, I look forward to staying in touch with you and reading more of your writings, and you did a magnificent job on my chart, and so I wish you the best, and uh, thanks again for being on the show. Thank you, Lance. It's been a pleasure. All right. Talk to you all soon.